Hello and welcome to another Baggy Brothers video. We're talking all things Albion. We've got a bit of interaction from uh, a few of our followers on Instagram today, as well as we're going to have a quick chat about the Blackpool game from the FA Cup of the weekend. Now, I haven't watched the highlights, mainly because I saw you posted a thing saying, is it worth watching it? And most people said, don't ruin your evening. It's not worth it. It was rubbish. We were shit. But you've yeah. seen the highlights. <clears throat> yeah, by the looks of it, we did a good job in moving you up back home on that yeah. day rather than watching that shower of crap. Um, <laughs> yeah, from what I've seen, we were really poor. We were lucky to get the penalty, I thought, as well, in the second half, which Pereira obviously scored to take it to extra time. We couldn't do anything. I watched extra time live because um, I'd got back by them. But yeah, we were poor and the penalties were poor. Um just really negative result, isn't it, really, for a League One side like Blackpool to beat us? I know they were at home, and I know we're not in the greatest of form, but with all due respect, we should be beating the League One side, um, even yeah, with the team we've put, even with the team we put out. Um, yeah, we still had quite a few players that are featured in the Premier League this season. In well, it is uh, uh, one thing. One thing I would say is at least we weren't the only team to have an upset. No, Obviously, I don't think it was Crawley, the biggest. Oh yeah, I don't think with, that was a bit. Leeds, yeah. But I was talking to I was talking to a mate about it, and he was saying, "How does stuff like this happen?" And it was, I, th I think it comes down to a combination of obviously, you rest your first team players, or most of your first team players, or some of them, or however, so you can play the players that don't play as much to try and get them some you know match fitness, and then because they haven't got the co team cohesion or whatever, and they haven't played together or properly for ages, that's how losses happen because they're just not used to playing the game on any level but you're completely right and I, I do agree with you and I think it's a it is a it is a bigger concern than it it should be really at this point like if we were doing well in the league and this happened it would just be like oh whatever we the FA Cup. Yeah. but the fact that yeah we're struggling against the league one side you know sc scraping back a draw okay. and then I mean you also said it as well penalties are, are they're a lottery like yeah they are they could be the best team in the world. Can't yeah. you be the best team in the world and you could lose to a bunch of Sunday team players? Yeah. It's just yeah. Yeah, it's it's basically down to if your goalkeeper's good at penalties, really, more than anything. Yeah. Um but so, Which Button, you know, was, Button was quite good. He saved the first one, didn't he? So Yeah, he did save the first one. But you've but you know, it's uh Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, going out on penalties, whatever, but you'd hope that against you know, no disrespect to Blackpool. But not going like out, you know, they're not flying high in League One either. They're mid table. No, no, no. So if they were like challenging at the top and they're on a really good run of form, then yeah, okay, you can. You'd, you'd, they'd be understandables, but yeah. Not, yeah. It's it's just more disappointment. And then obviously, Big Sam after after the match came out and 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 said this, and this is a quote from from Big Sam. The battle was always going to be tough. I saw exactly how tough it was going to be by Blackpool using their assets, playing off big Medine up front, who causes a problem. And we have to battle in that area. But the most disappointing thing for me was that the goals didn't come from that area. They came from our lapses in concentration. It's quite interesting that, you know, we, we've, we've spoken about it. And I know a lot of fans talk about how the players aren't, you know, concentrating at the level that they're at. Yeah. And not putting in the effort. And I suppose it's quite reassuring that he's noticing it. <laughs> yeah. But... I mean, to call Gary Medine a big asset that's going to cause a Premier League side real problems, that's pushing the boat a little bit, I think. That's taken, sure. that's taken the Michael massively. Sure. Um, I mean, I don't think any other Premier League manager would come out and say, yeah, he's class. The reason, if he's that class, why is he not playing in the Premier League? Yeah. If he's, if he's that good, why problems, are we not signing yeah. him? You know? Yeah. I mean, he's not. It's not like he's Didier Drogba or anyone like that up top that's going to no, cause no. us all those problems, or like a Diego Costa, that's a big yeah. man up front, with someone yeah. like that quality. But yeah, you can't be saying stuff like that. That's yeah. embarrassing. To yeah, the team. Very, no very... respect to obviously the Blackpool player, but that's embarrassing coming out. I think saying that. Yeah, it's, it, again, it's it's just it's just more causes for concern, isn't it? Uh, he goes on to say, both their goals were getting th uh, through the middle after we gave the ball away. We came back twice with goals from Shemi, good, uh, good header and the penalty. Extra time came and both sides went out to try and win it. We got the best possible start with Butts saving the first penalty. Then from our point of view, Sam's hugely disappointed in the penalty takers that missed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you all... save the first penalty and you put yourself 1-0 up, at the level we're supposed to be at, we shouldn't have lost at all. 
again, I'm not I'm not contending any of the things he says because no. they they're they're the observations that we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think it, I think it it comes across differently when you've got your manager saying things like that. I think you know fans and pundits and you know people that aren't involved in the club, you can say those sort of things and kind of get away with having your opinion. Yeah. But when you're the manager of a club, again, there's got to be some responsibility taken for the previous, you know, 120 minutes of football. You've where... set up, you've set up a team to go and beat Blackpool, and you've he's not. Got, he's gone five at the back. Yeah, and five in and midfield, no, no striker. So yeah, when I put that question, of course out, they're not why, any goals. Why, why did we lose the game? And the amount of people coming back saying we didn't have a striker on the field. Well, I was like, yeah, that's a pretty good point. Um, we obviously had young Diaby, didn't we, in the match yeah. in the Premier League? I thought he was going to be um, put up top to see what he can do. <clears throat> you'd have hoped, seeing as he got drawn into a Premier League game, you think, oh, maybe, maybe because he didn't play, then he'll play in this. But yeah, I thought the same, but. No, obviously not. Um, obviously, Robson Carney's out injured, so yeah. he wouldn't he wouldn't have featured. Austin's uh, obviously on Grant's his way down. Injured. To, yeah, Austin's on his was on his way to probably to QPR. So yeah, and um, Robinson obviously is resting. Yeah. So, uh, but even so, like yeah, not not playing a striker. Not playing a striker. Seems... That's always worrying, mm. especially against Blackpool. Why why wouldn't you go four four two at least? Or go or to the four five one or five four yeah. one. Just put a striker on because yeah. it's gonna, regardless of who it is, if they're a striker, that's what they're supposed to be good at, scoring goals. If we'd had a striker and they hadn't scored any goals, you know, again, an argument could have been made what was the point of playing them. But if you don't play them, you don't know. And especially someone that has just broken into the first team, like Diaby, should have given him the game, really. But yeah. and to not start Harper either. Yeah. After I saw he was on the, I thought, oh, I thought Harper was when they announced because I was on the way back up when they announced the team, and yeah. I was like, that's not really seeing what all your fringe players are about, like what you said. Not yeah. really. I mean, Grzyski had a good game for by yeah. all accounts. He looked okay, um, but apart from that, yeah, Pereira, yeah. But it's Blackpool. You can't say yeah. that. You can't go out and make a big thing about Pereira playing quite well. It was Blackpool. Yeah. Pereira playing well against Blackpool is the minimum you'd expect. Yeah, massively. if he'd scored like a hat trick or had scored a hat trick or set up, you know, was involved in three goals being scored for us in the first half, you'd be like, wow, he's playing really well. Yeah. And it'd be something to be impressed about. But yeah, he scored our goal. Good. And it was a penalty, yeah. And it was a penalty. So it's not like he had a you know any challenge there. Yeah. 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 Just to finish really? off Sam's Sam's quote, sorry. Um I'm disappointed with that. The effort from the players was fine. I've seen players I've not seen before. I'll make a judgment on them, on them in the next few weeks, and then we'll move forward as best we can under these restrictions, and we'll be working as hard as we can to bring new players in. I think Sam's already made his mind up about who he wants to keep and who he doesn't, which, <clears throat> again, you know, is completely in his right. That's his job. Yeah, of course it is to set but his it's... team up, and, but he's got to start getting results and getting them quick. Yeah, because if he has another three losses, could we be seeing a potential sack him? Two well, six, two managers well, sack. Well, it's interesting you say that because there was there's been a few pundits this week talking about how he, if he doesn't get the back in this transfer window, he might walk. Yeah, I saw Chris Sutton put a thing out, didn't he, saying that yeah. um, he reckons Sam will walk if he's not backed. Which so, which you can again completely understand and can almost well, endorse really because they didn't really. They, I mean, they. I suppose they backed Slav enough to sort of let, get him the signings he wanted from our team last season, but they didn't really enforce it too much with him getting like good funds to kind of bring in a, a proper team. So it's yeah, if, if, it's a hard one, isn't it? Because no one really knows what the chairman said that it, Sam's got when he approached him yeah, and yeah. said, "If he said, oh, Sam, you've got a hundred million to go and spend,' and Sam gets two, yeah, okay." If he comes yeah. out later on and says, that's the reason I've walked. He said, I had a hundred million. He gave me two. If he's come out and said, yeah, he said, oh, I've got a, like about a five million pound budget, but we need to get rid of a couple first and whatever else. And he's bought in Snodgrass, which was a free transfer, I believe. Yeah, I and, think so. And Lonergan, who was free. Yeah. I think so, as well. So he's yeah. had to do two. True. I mean, going on to that, because we were about to talk about the, uh, the transfers. Yeah. Bringing in Snodgrass. How do you feel about signing him? I'm personally, what? I'm kind of, you know, six of one really. Um, I think it's a good signing, and there's reasons why. 
I think he'll be great around the dressing room because whenever you've seen him on like Soccer AM or whatever else, He's or other players, the character and he builds up and gets people happy and confident again, which yeah. is what we need. He's a leader. He, mm. he is a bit of a leader and he's got a wealth of experience, which yeah, is totally. again what we were lacking. I know he's the wrong side of 30s, 32, isn't it? Or 33, I think he is. 33. So, but his work rate's good. He's always yeah, definitely. worked hard. So, and he has got a belter of a left foot. So basically, I'm seeing it as a replacement for Chris Brunt coming in. Almost, And yeah. hopefully get him to play for these one and a half, two <clears> years, whatever he's signed for now. Um, try and get the best out of Snodgrass. And whether that's in a wide position or you bring him more central and have him that little bit deeper because he's lost that extra yard of pace, I don't know where Sam sees him fitting. But I do think he'll be good around the dressing room and for the players and hopefully to bring him up a bit. And also if Sam's throwing this old school attitude at people to basically slam them and basically say that you are crap, yeah, it's he's one of those players that will take it on the chin and say, look, boys, or he'll go and explain to the other lads, look, yeah. this is his style of management. You just got to go out there and perform, blah, blah, blah. So he could explain it to them. Whereas uh, maybe in a JE or I'm trying to think of the squad players that are maybe more senior-ish, like a Livermore might not and go and say that to him. Snodgrass seems like he'll... F- and he's also got quite a few mates there as well, um, yeah. by all accounts. There's quite a few players that he gets on with and he's played with in the past. So, And also yeah. he's linking up with James Morrison as well, who he was really good friends with. Yeah, Obviously all, as part of the coaching points. role. So I think it is a positive move, and especially as it's free. It's, an, it's a good free transfer. I think. Yeah, totally. It's, it, it's almost like they've signed the, the man, not the player. Yeah, because of just because of the sort of person he is. Yeah, I think I think it does make sense as a transfer. Um, also, as well, yeah, we've got Andy Lonergan in, who was at Liverpool and then Stoke and now us. And I think you posted as well. And I think it is basically just as a replacement if Bondy's off to LA Galaxy, yeah. which I think he is now. Um, so I can't see him really featuring as a first team player. Just he's just going to be there really yeah. as absolute backup, which is fine. You know, whatever yeah. he's there, he's just a you know a number, isn't he? And then obviously Charlie Austin's gone back to QPR on loan. Um, you can see, he's really excited about that as well. I'm best to look yeah. him because I thought he was really yeah. good for us last year. He scored some crucial goals, didn't he? Yeah, totally. Um, in that promotion winning season, so yeah, I think yeah. best to look to him. It'd be it'd be a good move for him. He'll hopefully get a bit of goal scoring form back, and and yeah, he's back at a club he used to play at that he did really well at. So yeah, good luck to him. I hope he goes well. Another thing on that one is as well, it gets a big wage off the bill. That is very he true. He was quite a high paid player. Mm. Whether Snodgrass comes in on the same sort of money and that's just the like for like, I don't know. But very possible. Yeah, I think um, that basically freed up Snodgrass money, basically. So yeah, it's not a bad deal, is it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, in terms of those two players, well, Snod, Snodgrass coming in and Austin going, I'm, I'm, you know, it seems like a fair trade just in terms of squad players. But now, obviously, we've got some gaps in a striker and some of our transfer room is obviously Sam is chasing strikers predominantly more than anything else. Yeah. First striker and direct quote from Sam is that he he's interested in Josh King from Bournemouth. If the price is right, they'll go for him. If it's not, they won't. And it looks like Bournemouth are asking for around 15 million, which is a totally reasonable price for him. Oh yeah, of course. It is. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of me that kind of hopes that, he, you know, that is the sort of money the club will free up for him because obviously the video we did recently with Baggy's uh, Baggy Bulletin, he was one of the guys that I wanted us to sign. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which means I'd, I'd win. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that'd be, you know, I'd be very happy, obviously, if he joined. Yeah. He, he's proven in the Prem. Really good, you know, really good out and out striker. But some, I mean, the other names that we've been linked with, do you know any of them? <laughs> Have you heard of any of these guys before? Go on, then say the names and I'll tell you. I'll tell you if well, you've got them all written down. Yeah, Clement Grenier from uh, Rennes. The name so rings a bell. I have heard of him from his younger days when he played for Leon. Um, okay, fair enough. And he, he has played for France a couple of, uh, like five or six times, I think it was. Okay. So he's got experience, but he's an attacking midfielder. Um, and actually, I spoke to Baggy's Willison earlier about it. I said, is that really what we need? He's more of an attacking midfielder. We think we need more of a holding midfielder with getting mm. Snodgrass in. So, yeah, I don't know if that one's a bit up in the air. But again, it's a free transfer. If it's free, then yeah, I suppose it can't really be complained about. But obviously, it has, you know, just putting people on the books and hoping that they do the job. Yeah, mm. it's a bit. No, no. I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, Stefan, I'm going to butcher this surname, Bahoken from Angers. Yeah, I've not Striker. heard of him. Not Never him. heard of him. Kasper Junker or Junker. I think it's Junker because he's from Norway. Kasper Junker from Bodo Glimt. 
No, nope, never heard of him. Heard of him no. uh, and probably would be quite a risky signing. You know, he's been playing really well in the in the Norway Premier League, whatever that's called, Elite Syrian or something like that. Yeah, but he's yeah he's doing really well over there. But then, just because he's doing well over there, is he going to do any good in the Prem? No. Possibly not. No. Um, and then the other name that apparently we're leading the race to sign, uh, Hamza Chowdhury. Yeah, that is one we recognise. Which is someone we recognise. We would we really like. Him. Yeah. Yeah. He's Maybe he's that sort of holding midfielder that yeah. we're on about that we hope he brings in. But yeah, I mean, I, th- I think obviously Sam's priority now is getting one, maybe two strikers in. Yeah. Because that's because that is what we are missing now in in the squad. We've yeah, hundred percent. We've, we've only got Robson, Carnu, and Grant really, haven't we? Robinson yeah. can play striker, but yeah, yeah. So, unless we go to the youth, like we've got Diaby and people yeah. like that. So um, yeah, yeah. Bit thin on the ground. I did put that out there as mm. one, and a lot of people did agree. We yeah. are a little bit thin in the attacking option, and that's where we need to strengthen because we do need goals to win. We do need some goals. That is that is definitely the thing that is missing from our games. Yeah. Uh, should we get on to the Instagram questions? Yeah, go for it. Okie kokey. First one I'm going to go for, and this is actually also a transfer rumour, uh, and it was put in from Bucket Hat Sam. Love that name. Uh, would we be happy if we went in for Josh, Josh Meyer from Bordeaux? And I think he was at Sunderland? Yeah. On he loan was. a few seasons back. He's a, he's Again, a, not familiar with him really, but I remember seeing him. And I've seen him I, I, when we were linked to them. I watched a few clips on YouTube. He is a good. He does look like a good striker, um, yeah. pacey. So it could I think be he, someone that we need. It just depends on the money, though. If we're going to shell out the money that everyone's wanting for these players, so yeah, ultimately that's, that's the thing. If if I'd be I'd be happy with him joining if he <laughs> scores, you know. 15 goals between now and the end of the season and keeps us up. Yeah. Or even 10. If he scores 10 <laughs> goals and they're 10 goals that we need to get points and we get them, then yes, I'll be very pleased if he joins the club. Um, uh, Cooksey89 asks, if Sam was to leave, whether that was end of the season or before, who realistically would we want to replace him? And we, oh. we know we've got a list of you know, of, yeah. of a few people that we both are fans of as managers. I think it depends where we are. If we're in the Premier League, I'd probably want Nigel Pearson. If we're in the Championship, maybe someone like Eddie Howe. I think. They're the two names I would have picked. Really? They're the ones that shine out for you and that are probably realistic for a club like us. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think in, in, if we if we stayed up or got relegated, those would be the two people I would want. Yeah, Nigel Pearson because he's no nonsense, or Eddie Howe because I just you know Eddie Howe's a really likable manager. You yeah, know, is, for, yeah. especially considering what he did with Bournemouth. You know, he's a little bit like Billich, isn't he? He's real player <clears throat> focused and so, like and really arm round and come on, we'll grow this club together. We can do it. Yeah, and he totally. sticks with his players. So yeah, no, those yeah, two big, I'd go for. Big big fan of both of those as people. Um, <clears throat> Jar Baggy or Yabaggy, possibly if it's a soft J. Uh, would we go to the championship if it meant a takeover and change occurs? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that was quite think, quick, wasn't it? I, I think. I think we're not stupid as fans. It looks like the championship is probably incoming anyway. If it was also met with a takeover from anyone that just cared about the club, whether they had. Not even cared about balanced. the club, even if they just wanted to put some money actually into the Well, this, club. Is, this is what I mean. Someone, someone that cares about the club, whether they're going to pump millions into it and, you know, turn us into a man city, which I don't know how I'd feel about that. I mean, it'd be great. I'd be but quite happy, yeah. It. It'd, be, it'd be awesome if we were signing loads of players and, yeah. you know, oh, great, we've we got Messi. Yeah. But at the same time, it, then it starts getting a little bit like, eh, is it ruining it? I'd be happy with just someone coming in and kind of going, all right, cool. Let's let's sort the club out. Here's fifty million. Go and sign a handful of players. Get promoted. Here's another fifty million. Yeah. You know, and just sort of looked after the club and kept it consistency. Yeah. Yeah, and and made us you know a, a half decent mid table prem team for five or six years. Then built on it. That's the, probably the sort of owner that we need. Yeah. Realistically, because yeah, none of us are happy with the way no. Lie's been running the club. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd yeah, I'd happily go to the championship if a takeover meant 
it would, you know, if we met a takeover, would happen. And we'd start winning games as well, hopefully. <clears throat> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, well, we've already we've already kind of touched on this, but and again, it's one of these strange <laughs> Instagram names. So sorry if I say it wrong. Arm XXN. Uh, who will depart the club in January and what are the main priority positions we need to strengthen in? We've already kind of touched on this in a few other videos, but it's worth sort of going over it. There's not really any place where it's, you know, it's not, nothing's we could perfect. Strengthen everywhere, uh, couldn't we, apart from keeper, basically. Apart from Sam Johnston. It's basically, I think, I think at the moment, a striker is the priority. A goal scorer is the priority. Yeah. Um, and then someone to hopefully shape up the defence a little bit and someone to shape up the midfield. Doesn't yeah. have to be doesn't have to be, you know, crazy basically, expensive players, but just solid performers. The spine of the team, basically. Another player we were linked, another player we were linked with today was James McCarthy as well from Palace, who's another holding midfielder that yeah, I forgot to write that down, but I did see that and I, I was a little bit annoyed about that one when I saw that because he was one of the people I was gonna put in my uh <laughs> in Nothing. our chat. But right. yeah, but it, but again, yeah, someone like that would be something solid to sort out the middle. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's pretty much just straight down the middle. Maybe, I mean, Christ, I mean, <laughs> what are the main priority positions? All of them, really. But the ones I would sort out would be, yeah, centre-back, uh, centre-mid and striker, him. really. Okay. And then yeah. who do we think will depart the club in January? Well, obviously, Charlie's gone already. I think Kravinovic is probably on his way out. Yeah. The only the only one I don't want to see go is Johnston. Um, mm -hmm. I, can see, I can see a few more fringe players possibly going out on loan. People I like don't Kyle think Edwards or you know, yeah, Keeper. But... I was surprised we managed to get rid of Austin. You know, I thought we might have to keep a bit of the Deadwood, not the Deadwood, but you know, the ones that are going to just run down their contract. Yeah, seeing um, as his contract is running out at the end of the season, yeah, you might think that he'd be like, ah, fuck it, I'll just stay in. Yeah, give him a so give, give him a wage. At least we've got Austin out to free up a bit of funds, but yeah, anyone else in that team, I mean. Krasinski played all right the other day, I thought, and I think he would be yeah, good enough. Well. And I think he would be good enough in the Prem. So I wouldn't want to see him go. Maybe, um, like when we spoke about a baggy bulletin, maybe getting a few out on loan, if the few of the younger ones, if they're not going to feature. Yeah. Maybe Field, Harper and Edwards. Um, get them a bit more experience. And... I definitely want to bring Field into the first team. Yeah, I do as well. Because, um, well, if you, well, he was part of he was part of our first team in rotation when we were in the Prem the last time. Yeah. So yeah. It, may, it doesn't make sense to me that he wouldn't be part of that rotation or hasn't really, you know, really featured that much. But no. yeah, very, very strange. So yeah, hopefully some of the, the the youngsters and yeah, I guess all those players that are running out of contract, you've kind of got to Either shift or just now. keep Do you them let, in. let them go for free at the end of the season, work their asses off and make them, you know, slave for a club that they might not be at next season or do you just sort of go yeah go on see you later and yeah. you know clean out the club um last question um, we're going to go for here is from nathan perkins 501 and he asks what have we thought of sam allardyce so far um like we spoke about last time i don't he's only had a week with him properly training so i think maybe after the West Ham game is when we can properly judge him. But from what we've seen so far, it's been a, I don't think it's been any better than what Bilic was offering us. And especially attacking wise, that's dropped off massively. I think the threat going forward. And I think the reason we bought Sam in was to make us more defensively solid. And we've actually ended up conceded more than, well, as much as what Bilic was when Bilic mm. was here. So it is a bit worrying. I thought Sam would come in and we would be, yeah, if we're losing, we'd be losing like one ish nils. Something like that, yeah. Really scraping and battling, but it's not really worked at all. So I think he needs some consistency in that back line. Um, but what he does with it, I don't know. I mean, Kipper came on and played okay, but it's Blackpool. So do you give him a shot in the first team? I mean, Ivanovic was poor again against Blackpool, and I think he, like I said in the last video, I think he's shown his true colours now that he is. He's not the player we all, yeah. He's not the player we all wanted to come in. Um. And really hold down that central defensive role with a couple of youngsters next to him and build on him and show him where to go and everything else, like Terry did in the end of his career, uh, and yeah. Rio and all the other greats, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a hard one, isn't it? Because he hasn't had a lot of training sessions with them because of the runner fixtures we had. He obviously had last week, the week before Blackpool, 
um, which it wasn't a very, very good performance. So no, it's just how many, how many yeah, I'd say given yeah. to the West Ham game to judge him personally. But yeah, I, I would say based on the performances he's, he, we've had so far under him, we've really only had one where I thought was a good performance. And that was against Liverpool. Yeah. Every other game that we've had, the other, is it four now? Yeah. It's, it's very disappointing. And again, you know, you don't, you'd never know what's going to happen with any club when a new manager comes in, whether they're going to fix all the problems immediately, or it's going to be a slow burn to sort things out. But it is, it is a massive concern that we've, yeah, we've done so poorly in an area he's supposed to be, you know, really good at. Yeah. Whether that's being out of the game for a few years and then comes back in and thinks, yeah, this is, this will work. And he's, you know, just, you know, behind the game and he's not, you know, up to date with stuff. But it's more the thing more for me that sort of bothers me more about him as the manager is actually just his attitude in press conferences yeah. and how he treats the players, his players, his team, his, you know, yeah. and he just has, you know, just, you know, slates them every bloody week. And it's just like, I get it that, you know, they might not be the players you want to work with, but that's who you work with. And you can't just shit all over them. You can't just lower their morale every week. You've no. got to do what you can to sort of encourage them at least. And, you know, and then, yeah. Well, the Birmingham Mail wrote an article about um, Pereira and basically saying he's really depressed at the minute and he, he's hating playing for Big Sam. And you can see that. And I've quite a few people on Instagram the other day when I put out there, what was the game like? Why did we go wrong? Said he's lost the dressing room. You can see it that no one on that pitch wants to play for him. So wow. if that is the case, then because obviously we didn't <clears> see the full game. I mean, I only saw the highlights, so I can only go what I've seen off the highlights. But yeah, if that is the case and it, he's lost the dressing room already, already, that's really bad, isn't it? <laughs> and it's that's, not that great. It's not horrific. great. Horrific. So, yeah, it's, it's, I, think, I, I, think, I think it doesn't help. And again, I know we, we've spoke, we've said this a few times, but I don't think it helps the circumstance in which he's been brought into the club. There was, yeah. you know, we had Slaven Bilic, who the fans loved. I think the players loved working with. And yeah, we didn't yeah. necessarily perform well under him. But you could tell the players respected him and they worked as hard as they could for him. And who knows, if he'd stayed in and was given this window, maybe he would have turned things around and maybe we would have got a few more points here and there. It's yeah. impossible to tell because obviously, you know, He's yeah. not here. No. But but you bring in someone like Sam Allardyce, who is, you know, he doesn't talk shit and, you know, comes in and says how he feels about stuff. And, you know, maybe the players, it's, it's a shock to the system, to the players. And then you kind of think, they're kind of thinking, well, fuck you. Like, you're supposed to be coming in and helping us. And all you've done is talk shit about us. Why, why we, we don't want to play for you. No, we want, we want you out of here quicker than the, the board wanted Slav out. So... Yeah, there's a lot of young players in there as well. And actually, interesting enough, listen to Danny Murphy when um, we all got the sad news that, um, oh no, it's gone out of my head now. Their manager that passed away, the Liverpool uh, manager, Gerard Julio passed away. Yes. He actually came out and said about Gerard um, Julio coming up to him and saying, look, Danny, you need to book your ideas up. And even when they went on to win um, the Champions League, he yeah. still said, right, Danny, you're coming in pre-season. He's like, why, Gaffer? I had the best season of my life and stuff like that. He said, well, it's because you haven't put that England shirt on yet, so you're going to come in, you're going to work hard. And with young players, sometimes you need to take a different attitude. And we have got a very young squad. Mm, um, totally. So I think he needs to maybe readdress it. And yeah, like you say, look at it and say, look, there's a lot of foreign players in there. There's quite a few youngsters. I need to go differently about how I portray myself in the media and the way I manage them. Maybe I do need to be a bit more, because you know what quite a lot of youths these days are like, aren't they? They don't take any crap. No. They'll just go and sulk and, yeah. Yeah. Look at Berahino. He thought he was the next best thing and look at what he's happened to his career. So if you don't get in their heads like the Fergusons did with the Giggses and Sharps and Scholes <clears> and Beckhams, if you don't go out there and put your arm around them and get them at a young age and say, no, come on, look, you need to keep doing this. Yes, you've got an amazing talent, but you need to keep training hard and doing everything. Well, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Isn't he also supposed to be rumored to be like one of the best, like as in terms of man management as well? He's supposed to be really good at you know man management and looking after his club, looking after his players. 
I've not seen it. So <laughs> I don't think so. I if mean, he is, not... he's shit at it. Oh. But yeah, mm. maybe, maybe it's a sign of the times. Maybe he's passed it as a manager. Who knows? I mean, like you say, I'm happy to give him a few more games before we properly judge. Let his, even the end of the transfer window, let, let it, let it all settle. Let him get in the players that he wants, you know, the game after the transfer window and then, and then really make a decision on, all right, what do we think of him? And be like, right, no, he's ruining our club. He's, he's sending it down the pan, get him out or yeah, yeah he's the right person we need. It's really Thank bad by the it's really bad by the board, isn't it? That like if you look at us all now, we were so anti Bilic getting sacked. We were really upset when Sam came in, obviously because of the type of manager. He's obviously proven that he's not doing great, and we could potentially look in at maybe sacking Sam or Sam walking. I mean, yeah. to get rid of two managers in a season that is appalling. So well, the last time that happened, we got relegated. Yeah, we did. So we'll bring Darren Moore back in for the end of the season. No, we'll have Brunty and Morrison. I've already oh. called it the dream team. I'll take that. Bronny and Morrison, dual managers. Yeah. And both of them just standing there giving like the shit. Salford, Like them Salford City boys that did yeah, it together. Yeah, yeah. Just have Brunty and Morrison doing it together. But oh, That'd be romantic, wouldn't it? It would be. And wouldn't, I think, it be wouldn't it be sweet? But they would get a lot more out of the players, I think, and they'd have the respect there. More Especially, than likely. Yeah, Brunt's played with most of them as well. So yeah. it's hard, isn't it? But we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Righto. Well, I think that, that draws us to an end. I guess we will see you after the Wolves game. Yep. Uh, score prediction? <laughs> um, I saw what a lot of people were putting online. M- more weirdly. people favouring Wolves, weirdly. Yeah, I don't know why. On a, on my little Portugal post I put up earlier, a lot of people liked it. And um, yeah, they, they were all going against it. A few people have said, we've had a three, we've had a four, we've had a five nil. Could it be a six nil? Oh, that'd be nice. nice. Oh, it could be awful, couldn't it? And it's Big Sum's team as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's really stacking up against... <laughs> he's going to play the goalkeepers up front, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's we'll going have... to do, do a football manager cheat and just go like, Button, you're up top. And uh, who's in goal? Who's the shortest? Dara, you can go in goal. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's going to necessarily I can't see go this. well. No, I can't see it getting anything out. Let's of it. Hope, let's hope we've got a good more. week off, haven't we? We've got more yeah. rest time than them. They're playing yeah. midweek, so and they haven't been in the best of form recently. No, very not true. really. So yeah, let's, they scraped it. They scraped a result at the weekend. Yeah, let's, a good let's goal just hope we get. A, let's just hope we can get a point. Yeah, let's go for that. And yeah. it's at Molin. It's at Molin. You so yeah, a point away from home would be a positive, wouldn't it? Totally. So right, so. Well, we'll see you all there. Thank you very much for watching. Click the subscribe button, click the like button because they help us out. Socials on the screen and we will see you next time.